a correction here showing 10%. And our target is 14.7 air fuel. And we can see here, we're actually at 15.5 air fuel. That's telling me that we're off. We need to go back into our table here and start to increase our values. So let's get that squared away first. I'll jump into my values here. Since we know it's adding 10%, I'll be using my closed loop status or my closed loop fuel correction to guide me in making my changes in my table. So I'm gonna jump in here. I'll do shift, ast shift asterisk, which is the multiply. I'll go 1.1. I know it needs to add 10%. That's what it's already adding here. Let's click OK. Give it a second. And what we'll find here is that the air fuel is gonna richen up and then the closed loop fuel correction here is gonna be dissipating downwards. It's gonna go back down to zero. Our goal is to have our correction here as close to zero as possible. That means that we have our fuel table itself dialed in pretty well. Now, the other thing I wanna point out with this table, we were talking about this before in our previous video, the configuration here under our master fuel being at six milliseconds. This is a background scaler to our main fuel table. What we wanna see if we're at around zero right here, we wanna see our values to be about 80 to 100 in the table. If they're lower than that, that means that our value here, our master fuel value, is gonna be off, and we need to uh, correct for it, adjust for it. So we might need to go down with this, maybe to four or five milliseconds, and that would allow us to bring our numbers up in the table here. Now the reason why we wanna do that is if we're manipulating the, value, the values in our table here. If we have really, really big value here for our master fuel, um, and we're going to do our tuning uh, in our table here, we'll find that the values are gonna be really, really small. If we make small adjustments, it'll have big air fuel changes. If we have a small master fuel value, uh, say, say something like two or three, and really large values in the table here, if we make a small change to the number, we'll find that the air fuel is gonna have a very minimal difference. The injector pulse width will vary just a little bit. So we'll have more fine resolution control. Um, we'll have to have a nice balancing act here. So far, this seems to be reasonable. I'm not finding any kind of discrepancies or problems controlling this. Now, we've added 10%, and we can see here it's settling out about seven, eight percent We need to add a little bit more fuel here. So again, we're just gonna be looking at what it's showing us here for the closed loop fuel correction, and then making our corrections based on that. So I'm gonna go in here, highlight this area. Let's go here from zero to let's say 2000. Let's do shift asterisk and do 1.06. That's gonna be adding 6%. And then we can see here that the um, air fuel richens up a little bit, but our closed loop fuel correction is gonna be going downwards and starting to um, have less fuel compensation being added. So we're essentially just matching what's, what it's showing us and what's going on here. Um, relatively straightforward to get this dialed in. Let's go from 1500 here to about 3000. Let's do shift H and do a little bit of blending there. We'll just kind of blend some values in our fuel table. So, so far so good. We can see that the idle here is nice and stable. We do find right now that the air fuel here is just a touch bit rich. The closed loop fuel correction here is going and taking some out. So we might've went a little bit too far. Let's go back here and just take a touch bit of fuel out. So we'll go shift asterisk. Let's go 0 0.98, 0 0.97. I'll take 3% out. So 0.97 is 3%. When we do that, we'll find that it should fall back in line here. Now, our closed loop control right now, our closed loop fuel correction is a little bit slow. We can speed that up. We can speed that up if we go into our closed loop tuning here and jump into the closed loop feedback rate. So our value is a one here. Let's just see what happens. If we go from a value of one to a value of something like five here at idle, notice what our closed loop correction is gonna be doing. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.